The Honda NSX is a sports car icon both on and off the track. Starting life as Japan's answer to European mid-engine supercars at the dawn of the 90s, the NSX would go on to change the way we think about supercars. But to become so beloved, Honda would need to prove their new flagship was more than just for show. The new NSX would need pedigree. It would need to win. It's the mid-80s, and engineers at Honda are toying with the idea of building something to compete with Ferrari. Initially, this involved little more than brainstorming and a cut-and-shut job on a poor Honda City to convert it to a mid-engined layout. They also commissioned design house Pininfarina to draw up a concept called the HPX in 1984. A far-out, futuristic sports… thing? that planted a seed of what was to come. Over the next couple of years, confidence grew that they might actually be able to build something that was not just fast and fun, but less expensive than its European counterparts, and also easier to live with. Japanese reliability and all that. Senior personnel at Honda were very open to the idea, but steps were taken to ensure that if they were going to do it, they were going to do it right. The team had settled on the use of the 2.7 litre V6 from the Honda Legend, an engine they would mount in the middle of the car for better weight distribution, much like the Italian supercars that had inspired them to begin with. For the body, they contracted Pininfarina again to pen the design, this time something a bit more production friendly. And they lent on all of Honda's best motorsport connections, including Ayrton Senna, to help craft a chassis and suspension setup that would ultimately prove to be a triumph, acting as Gordon Murray's explicit benchmark when constructing the McLaren F1. You'd be hard pushed to find a better vote of confidence than that. Before the NSX could change the world, however, it needed to enter production. Very late in development of the car, Honda's president, Tadashi Kume, who had himself been an engine designer earlier in his career, inquired as to why the engine they had chosen to use in their new flagship sports car didn't use Honda's new and innovative VTEC system, a technology that was soon to be rolled out on even their four-cylinder sporty options. This quickly led to the 2.7-litre Legend engine being ditched in favour of an all-new 3-litre V6 complete with VTEC. The car had been designed around the old engine, however, and it wasn't just going to be a plug-and-play change. The engine bay was pretty tight, and to package the new engine, the engineers needed to rotate it 5 degrees a feature that the first-generation NSX retained for its entire production life. The NSX, standing for New Sports Car Experimental, though they're really pushing the definition of an acronym with their choice of letters there, was innovative in a number of ways. Not only did it have Honda's new VTEC variable valve timing system, but it was also the first production car to feature an all-aluminium body, which saved an estimated 200 kilograms over building the equivalent panels out of steel. In 1989, the car was unveiled to the public, making its motor show debut at the Chicago Auto Show before going on sale in Japan the following year. While it wasn't as visually striking as many of its European counterparts, nor was it as powerful or as loud, the car was praised for its driving feel and handling capability. This would be taken a step further in 1992 with the development of the NSX-R, a more extreme interpretation of the NSX that would see excess weight stripped out, trading creature comforts for better handling and speed. The R also had some changes to its suspension setup to reduce the chances of snap oversteer, which was a problem that the normal car suffered when pushed a bit too far. The NSX-R was uncompromisingly speed-focused, so it should come as a surprise to absolutely nobody that there was an appetite to see what it could do on a racetrack. With Honda support, English company TC Prototypes heavily reworked a handful of NSXRs to compete in the GT2 class at Le Mans. Tremor Racing Honda and Team Kunimitsu would field the new cars in GT2 at Le Mans from 1994, with Tremor managing 6th in class on debut that year. It wasn't a bad result, especially for the first attempt, but everyone knew the car was capable of more. The following year, Honda entered a pair of NSXs in the GT1 class as well. One naturally aspirated car and another turbocharged car, making 600 brake horsepower, around 200 brake horsepower more than the GT2 cars. All the engines being used though were still fundamentally the same 3.0-litre V6, 
just with varying degrees of modification. In the GT2 class, Team Kunimitsu managed to win the event, a major milestone for Honda and for the NSX, which now had some real racing credentials. The GT1 cars, however, were less fortunate with one of them failing to finish and the other running so far behind the rest of the field, its finish wasn't even classified. After disappointment in the GT1 class in 1995, Honda didn't return the following year out of embarrassment, with the only NSX entry at Le Mans that year being Team Kunimitsu's GT2 car, which finished third in class. The NSX had been a conspicuous omission from Japan's domestic racing car scene, however. Surely it would make sense to pit the NSX against the best of Toyota, Mazda and Nissan. Well, really just Toyota and Nissan. For 1994 and 1995, the All Japan GT Championship, or JGTC for short, had opted to use the same GT1 slash GT2 rule set that was being used in Europe at the time following the collapse of Group C in the early 90s. 1994 had seen Calsonic Racing win in GT1 with the R32 Skyline GTR, and then the following year an R33 Skyline GTR won for Nissan, not that they needed it, Nissan had been dominating Japan's road homologated motorsports scene for years by this point. But costs had already begun to spiral under the GT1 rules, and the competition wasn't offering the new or exciting viewing experience that organisers had hoped to achieve. So the decision was taken that for 1996, the rules would be overhauled completely. Replacing the GT1 class would be a new class called GT500, and in place of the GT2 class would be GT300. The idea was simple enough. Vehicle development would be heavily restricted, and the cars would be restricted to 500 and 300 brake horsepower respectively. The primary goal was to entertain fans, and to this end, the new regulations included powerful balance of performance measures, which would see race-winning cars given additional ballast or other performance penalties in order to try and keep the racing close and the fans entertained. With the regulatory turbulence seemingly put to bed, Honda was ready to take part in the JGTC. They worked with racing car constructor Doma to build the chassis of the cars, the same company that had built Toyota's Group C racing chassis through the late 80s and early 90s. They also let engine specialist and tuning parts manufacturer Mugen have a swipe at the engine, which was a 3.5 litre V6 based on the 3.2 litre C32B unit that would be available in the road car from 1998. In line with the GT500 regulations, the engine made just shy of 500 brake horsepower. Honda's approach contrasted Toyota, who had ditched the 2JZ six-cylinder from the Supra in favour of a 2.1-litre inline-four from their WRC program. Honda's new purpose-built racing machine would be called the NSX GT. I would say a fun game would be to take a shot every time I use an acronym in this video, but it wouldn't be fun, you'd be hospitalised. Honda's factory effort wasn't ready for 1996, but there was an NSX racing that year. Team Kunimitsu entered the JGTC from round two using what was effectively a GT2 spec European racing car. They managed to finish 8th, 12th, 7th, 10th, then 11th. Not an enormously memorable season, but undoubtedly the more custom machinery on its way for 1997 would yield better results than that. After a short delay, 1997 would be the first year of Honda's factory JGTC effort. Team Kunimitsu and Mugen Doma would be fielding a car each, competing in the GT500 class against the formidable Nissan Skyline GTR and Toyota Supra. NSXs were missing from round one, but would compete from round two. They weren't immediately successful. In fact, they were quite the opposite. Round two at Fuji Circuit, and both cars failed to finish, neither making it to the dizzying heights of lap three. Round three at Sendai Highland Raceway, and things were tough once again, with Mugen Doma retiring with an oil leak and Team Kunimitsu finishing dead last. At least they did actually finish this time, I suppose. Things got a bit better in round four, though not for Mugen Doma, who failed to finish yet again. But Team Kunimitsu managed to come home 11th, better than last. For round five, the Hondas made really good progress. Mugen Doma qualified on pole, though were unable to hold the position in the race, coming home eighth place. Team Kunimitsu, however, managed to finish the race in second. The NSX wasn't a backmarker anymore. Perhaps it would be spoken of in the same breath as the Supra and the Skyline, after all. The final round of 1997 at Sugo and Team Kunimitsu managed to come second place again while Mugen Doma climbed to fifth. While the season had started out tough for both NSX entries, by the end of the year they'd found a stride. 
and hopes were high that maybe Honda could find a win the following year. It's 1998, and there are now four entries using Honda NSXs. Satoru Nakajima's Nakajima Racing, returning Team Kunimitsu, Team Castrol Mugen, and Doma Racing. Yes, Mugen Doma split. No, this is not the last time this happens. The opening round at Suzuka and Nakajima Racing managed an immediate second place finish, losing to familiar top spot holder Nismo. The second best NSX came 10th, the remaining two failed to finish. Round 2 at Fuji was cancelled, which was really unfortunate for the NSXs, the best of which had qualified 1st, 2nd and 4th. The racing was back underway from Round 3, though not really for the Hondas. Three of them failed to finish, with the one remaining car of Team Kunimitsu crossing the line dead last. On the plus side, things couldn't really get much worse than that. In Round 4, the NSX GT finally achieved what it had been designed to do. Claiming a momentous victory in Fuji in the hands of Tom Coronel and Koji Yamanishi for Nakajima Racing. This was immediately followed by yet another win for the NSX, this time it was the Castrol Mugen car. This was really encouraging stuff. Round 6 and the NSX had really come into its own, with Team Kunimitsu finishing first and Nakajima Racing coming a close second for an NSX 1 2. 1998's final round at Sugo saw yet another NSX take victory, with Team Castrol Mugen on the top step. Unfortunately for the other NSX runners, it appeared that Mugen had absorbed all of their collective luck, as one retired with a fire, another a drive shaft failure, and Doma's car was disqualified. Despite a number of strong individual performances throughout the season, none of the four Honda teams were able to string together enough points to contend for the championship. Nakajima Racing came closest, finishing second overall, losing out to the Pennzoil Nismo GTR of Eric Comas and Masumi Kagiyama. But with such strong performances, surely one of the Hondas would be in with a fighting chance the following year. For 1999, Mugen and Doma's semi-independent entries were reunited under the Mugen Doma project, which ran two cars and was sponsored by Takata, with Nakajima Racing and Team Kunimitsu both still running single car entries of their own. Round 1 at Suzuka and the number 18 NSX of Mugen Doma won straight out the gate deftly defeating Nissan Skyline and Toyota's Supra, which still represented the most dangerous competition. After strong performances in 1998 and an opening win in 1999, it was clear that the two-horse race between Toyota and Nissan had become a three-horse race, with everyone now fully aware that Honda posed a real threat. Honda reigned supreme again in round two, with Team Kunimitsu winning at Fuji. The following three races were less triumphant, but Mugen Doma was always hovering in and around the podium, picking up those all-important points. Honda would see another win in round 6. This time it was Nakajima Racing's car, with Mugen Doma not far behind in third. The final round at Motegi was won by Toyota, with Nissan's second and third. Mugen Doma's number 16 car came fourth, and Nakajima Racing came fifth. Much like the previous year, none of the individual NSX entries had been able to string together enough strong point scoring finishes to be in championship contention, with the best performance being that of the number 18 Mugen Doma car which claimed 4th in the championship, behind the two Penzoil Nissans in 1st and 3rd, and the Tom Supra which split them for 2nd. In the team's championship, Mugen Doma managed a podium, finishing 3rd overall, behind Toyota Team Toms and Nismo. Despite another strong year, Honda had actually ended the season further away from championship victory than they had been the previous year. The following year would be the beginning of the new millennium, would it offer them any luck? Some changes were made to the NSX GT for the 2000 season. The engine was lowered slightly to reduce the car's centre of mass and hopefully improve the handling. They also replaced the gearbox with a unit from Super Formula. The goal there to reduce shift times and weight. This was known as the NSX GT Phase 2. Once again, the Mugen Doma project was fielding two cars, with Nakajima Racing and Team Kunimitsu fielding a car each, with an additional NSX being run in GT500 by Aguri Suzuki's Team Aguri, in partnership with Autobax Racing. Round 1 and the number 16 Mugen Doma car came second, with Nakajima Racing in third putting two Hondas on the podium for round one, a good start for the reconfigured NSX. Mugen Doma's other car, car number 18, won the second round at Fuji, and while the other cars were less fortunate, 
this was still positive for Honda. Round 3 saw another NSX win. This time it was Nakajima Racing that took gold, with Mugendoma's number 16 in 2nd and number 18 in 4th. Then another NSX success in round 4 from yet another different team. This time it was Team Aguri. With the NSX's success being shared amongst so many teams, would any of them individually manage to claim the championship? Round 5 went the way of Toyota, though Mugendoma's number 16 car managed a now familiar second place, picking up another strong point scoring finish. Round 6 and this time it was Nissan in the top spot, but yet again the NSX's were not far behind. With the number 18 in 2nd and number 16 in 4th, Mugendoma and driver Ryo Majigami of the number 16 car had a good shot at championship victory, and with just one race left, it was go time. At the final round of the 2000 season at Suzuka, an NSX claimed victory, though it wasn't a Mugendoma car, rather the car of Nakajima Racing, with Mugendoma's number 16 finishing second place for the fourth time in seven races. Despite having not won a single race, the strong consistency of Mugendoma's number 16 car handed driver Ryo Michigami driver's championship victory. Not only that, but thanks to strong finishes from the number 18 car too, the Mugendoma project won the team's championship as well. A momentous occasion for Honda and the NSX GT program. It seemed as though Honda had really come into their own, and as the 2001 season began, they didn't show any signs of slowing down, with Mugendoma, Timaguri, and Nakajima Racing locking out the top three finishing spots at that year's opening round. Even after championship victory in 2000, this was the NSX's best ever race. 2001 was looking bright right off the bat. The second round was a little dimmer though, unfortunately. Not disastrous by any means, with Team Aguri and Team Kunimitsu coming 5th and 6th respectively, but Mugendoma and Nakajima Racing lagged. Sugo hosted round 3 and things were a bit better again, as Team Aguri managed 2nd place. Toyota were emerging as this year's biggest threat, with Team Toms and Team Kurumo both looking very strong at the start of the season. Not only that, but discounting Nissan would be a foolish move, as they were an omnipresent danger, as proven in Round 4, where Nismo claimed a 1-2 finish. Mugendoma and Nakajima Racing, the two best finishing NSXs, were relegated to 5th and 6th. The next round at Motegi saw Nakajima Racing take a win, fending off Team Kurumo's lightning quick Supra. Round 6 at Suzuka saw yet more Honda celebration, as Team Aguri scored victory against 2nd place Mugendoma, also in an NSX of course. Team Aguri had been very successful up to this point, and now they had a win under their belt, the fight was on between Team Aguri's NSX and Team Kurumo's Toyota Supra. The final round was a bit of a mess. The two contenders for the championship were the number 8 NSX of Katsutomo Kanaishi and Keiichi Tsuchiya racing for Team Aguri, and the number 38 Supra of Hironori Takeuchi and Yuji Tachikawa racing for Team Kurumo. Team Aguri was looking like the likely winner, but it was by no means a done deal. The race ended with a surprise victory for Team Take One, who won the event in a McLaren F1 GTR, while Team Kurumo finished a lowly 16th place. This would have been a slam dunk for Team Aguri had they not retired on lap 34. Team Aguri's accident sealed it and Toyota Team Kurumo won the championship. They beat the number 8 NSX by just two points. Despite all the drama in the driver's standings between the 38 Supra and the number 8 NSX, the team's championship was won by Nismo. And despite a quiet season after their winning opener, Mugendoma managed to claim second in the team's championship. 2002 didn't see much change, with the usual crew running NSXs, the only difference being Mugen Doma's rebrand to Doma Mugen. Truly earth-shaking stuff. It was a promising start, much like 2001, with Nakajima Racing taking victory ahead of the number 18 Doma Mugen car in round one. Races two and three saw Toyota victories, but the Hondas were never far behind, scoring podiums and nearly podiums at both events, before Nakajima Racing scored another win in round four. Round five was less good, with the best NSX finish being sixth, 
but the NSX was back to its winning ways the following round at Motegi, with Doma Mugen's number 18 car claiming the team's first victory of the season. Round 7 and Doma Mugen's second car, the number 16, won the event. Then Nakajima Racing won its third race of the season, at the final round at Suzuka. Despite their three wins, the number 64 Nakajima Racing NSX of Tsujiyo Matsuda and Ralph Furman lost out on Drivers' Championship victory by just a single point coming second to the number 6 Toyota Supra. Thanks to a couple of heroic performances though, and crucially avoiding any desperately bad days, Doma Mugen claimed the top spot in the team's championship, emphatically beating Toyota Team Le Mans by 21 points. In 2003, Honda progressed to the NSX GT Phase 3 with the car having been facelifted to match the road car's 2002 facelift. And thanks to relaxed road homologation rules, the transverse engine layout the race car had inherited from its road-going counterpart was ditched in favour of a longitudinal layout, though they retained the same 3.5-litre naturally aspirated V6. The Honda-wielding entrance would change slightly, with Doma Mugen split again, kind of, but also not really with the car number 16 running just as Mugen for the first four races of the season, before being entered as a Doma racing car for the remaining four races, while car number 18 was a Doma racing entrant only for the entire season. Why the contrivance? I'm not entirely sure. The rest you've heard before. Nakajima Racing were back, Team Kunimitsu and Team Aguri were back, Though in addition to their NSX GT500 entry, Team Aguri were now also competing in GT300 with the ASL Garaya, which I recently told the fascinating full story of on Intergalactic Binman's podcast, which I will link down below. Speaking of GT300, there was a new NSX entrant in that class too, with Verno Takai fielding a Honda. They weren't very consequential in 2003, but we will come back to GT300. The first few races of the season were underwhelming for the Honda teams, with generally consistent, if not particularly amazing results, until round 5, when the number 18 Mugen Doma car took victory at the Japan Special GT event. After 68 laps, the NSX of Ryo Michikami and Sebastian Philippe beat the second place running Nissan Skyline GTR by just half a second to the line. Round 6 at Motegi and Doma Racing's number 16 car claimed victory ahead of a horde of Toyota Supras, but this would be the last NSX victory in 2003. Nakajima Racing would finish second in round 7, and Doma Racing number 18 would finish second at the final round, but none of them had put together a wholly convincing season, with the best performing being the number 18 Takata Doma Racing car which finished 7th overall behind a mix of Skylines and Supras. The team standings told the same story, with Doma Racing ending the season in 3rd place, losing out to the best Nissan and Toyota entries. While the new millennium had seen the Toyota-Nissan two-horse race become a three-horse race with Honda's burst onto the scene, by 2003 the Honda-shaped horse looked to be running out of breath. They needed to claw back both championships. Could they do it? In an effort to make that fairy tale comeback, Honda made some major adjustments to its car for 2004. The naturally aspirated C32B V6 that had characterised the NSX GT since its debut was out, replaced by a turbocharged C30B V6, which, unsurprisingly given the regulations this racing series was under, made just shy of 500 brake horsepower. Beyond this, not much was changed. It wasn't enough to be considered a phase change, so the car remained in Phase 3. Following on from the latter half of 2003, the team formerly known as Doma Mugen carried on just as Doma Racing. The usual crew stuck around too, with the addition of a new GT300 entered NSX courtesy of MTEG. The only other notable change was Nissan's retirement of the Skyline GTR in favour of the 350Z. The first four races were nothing to write home about, with the GT500 NSXs performing pretty poorly. This was undoubtedly partly due to the engine cooling nightmare that had been onset by the move to turbocharging. Engine cooling simply wasn't adequate enough, and it meant that all teams running GT500 NSXs were slowed down. GT300 runner MTEC did score a handful of podiums though. Round 5 at Motegi and the NSX clinched a win 
Nakajima Racing fought hard and crossed the line in first place, miles ahead of their NSX compatriots. The final two races of the season, however, were more of the same for the GT500 cars, relegated to middling finishes at the end of the season. MTech, however, managed to take class victory at the final round in GT300, which handed them both teams and drivers championship victory, narrowly beating the team Aguri ASL Garaya. It might not have been the success that Honda was hoping for, but it's still a win worth celebrating. The GT500 team's championship was a disaster for Honda, with best performer Nakajima Racing managing a disappointing 7th place. In 2005, the All Japan GT Championship underwent a rebranding, becoming the much neater and catchier sounding Super GT. After the debacle that had been Honda's move to forced induction in 2004, they quite promptly made the move back to the engine they had been using since 1997. But 2005's car wasn't just 2003's car reincarnated, far from it. Despite going back to the old engine, the car had an aerodynamic overhaul. So extensive was the work done, they actually required a new road car to be homologated, resulting in the production of the NSX-R GT. Do you have a VTEC? Mm. VTEC low. This was kind of a homologation special representing a huge expenditure by Honda to get back to competitiveness with Toyota and Nissan. Given the huge changes made to the car, it was granted Phase 4 status. The only question was would Honda's ambition translate into results? Doma Racing, which had been Honda's closest racing partner, retired car number 16. The remaining number 18 car, along with Team Aguri's number 8, were entered under the single Team Honda Racing banner, though from what I can tell they still operated semi-independently. This was likely done to reduce the competition cost for Honda while retaining the benefits of a multi-car team. Namely, that because of the way the championship points were dealt out, the best result from each round is counted, they would stand a better chance of scoring a team's championship. Team Kunimitsu and Nakajima Racing remained unchanged, as did MTech in GT300. The first four rounds weren't great for the GT500 cars, though MTech won in round two in GT300, their primary competition being the ASL Garaya of Team Aguri. The Motegi 300 km was round 5, and Team Kunimitsu pulled off GT500 victory, Honda's first of the season, with the Team Honda Racing number 18 car a close second. This was a great day for the Hondas, but surely it was too little too late. The following race at Fuji saw GT300 gold for MTech, though GT500 bore less convincing results. Though Nakajima Racing were able to claim silver, before the number 8 Team Honda racing car came home in first place three weeks later at Autopolis. Unfortunately, however, the final round of the season was Honda's worst yet, with none of the cars coming anywhere close to troubling the podium. In the driver's standings, Honda racing drivers Ralph Furman and Daisuke Ito, in the number 8 Team Aguri run car, came a tantalizing second place. As did Team Honda racing in the overall team standings as well. Even after an uninteresting season on paper, Team Honda Racing had recovered strongly from 2004, and now both championships seemed to be in touching distance. By this point, the NSX was over a decade and a half old, and the racing program had been in full swing for nine years. It's safe to say the NSX had earned its sports car stripes. But there's no denying that the model, even after a 2002 facelift, was aging. 2005 would be the final year of NSX road car production, with the official end being November the 30th. Despite the road car leaving production, the NSX GT would continue its role as Honda's mascot in Super GT for a couple more years yet. Not much changed going into 2006 on both the team side and the technical side, at least for Honda. Though the unification of the number 18 Doma racing car and the number 18 Maguri car under Team Honda Racing continued, the points sheet suggests that they were now actually considered separate entities again, at least insofar as the team's championship was concerned. 
So for ease of communication, I will refer to them as their old names again. Toyota started using Lexus SC430s, which honestly don't look that much better as race cars. However, they were really fast. Toyota's new Ugly Duckling won the first race. And with Honda using last year's machinery, touching distance might have been further than they were hoping. Doma Racing, however, won round two at Okiyama, with Team Kunimitsu not far behind for a Honda 1-2. Race three wasn't Honda's day, but race four was won by Team Aguri. The next NSX victory would come in round seven, courtesy of Team Kunimitsu. Then Nakajima Racing won the final round, meaning that all four GT500 entered NSXs won at some point in the 2006 season. Despite the NSX's success as a model, none of the teams could quite manage overall glory, with Team Kunimitsu getting closest at third overall, and their drivers Shinya Hosokawa and Sebastian Philippe finishing just one point shy of Drivers' Championship victory, relegated to a devastatingly close second place. For 2007, the regulations around floor aerodynamics were changed slightly to reduce the efficacy of the ground effect. This forced most competitors to change their floor designs at least slightly. This didn't seem to impact lap times for the GT500 cars, however, which were sometimes lapping more than a second a lap quicker than they had done the previous year. The changes Honda had to make were demarcated by a move to Phase 5. The Team Honda Racing umbrella was finally abandoned, and the number 8 car officially went back to Autobax Racing Team Aguri, and the number 18 of course became Domo Racing again. Team Kunimitsu and Nakajima Racing continued as they had done for years, but for the first time in ages there was a new GT500 NSX entry in the form of Rolling Stone Real Racing. Despite a lackluster first race, round 2 was good for the NSXs with Team Aguri winning the event before everyone returned to middling results again for the following two races. Team Aguri, however, scored their second victory at Sugo, ahead of Doma Racing and Nakajima Racing, forming a Honda podium lockout, the first in over five years. If there was a chance to claim championship victory, it surely looked like this. Round six, and Team Aguri was on the podium again, this time in second place, securing those all-important points before Domo Racing won the following round, all of the NSX runners were looking pretty strong. The penultimate race witnessed yet another win for Team Aguri. And for the first time ever in Super GT or JGTC, the championship had been decided before the final round. Autobax Racing Team Aguri and drivers Furman and Ito claimed championship victory with a race to go. The final round was won by an NSX 2 this time the machine of Nakajima Racing, who themselves claimed second in the Drivers' Championship and third in the Team's Championship. It had been the best year ever for the NSX, even in spite of its advanced age. But even so, how much longer could they really campaign this car? They couldn't even justify it as a marketing expenditure, because the road car counterpart to their racing machine, which was winning, wasn't for sale anymore. 2008 unfortunately compounded this feeling, as it was characterised by pretty forgettable NSX outing. They were always there, in and around the podium, collecting strong points finishes, with Doma Racing picking up Honda's only win of the season at round 5, but they seemed a long way from the domination of 2007. It was getting clearer than ever that the NSX GT's time in the sun was coming to an end. It was therefore decided that 2009 would be the final year of competition for Honda's noble steed. 2009 was supposed to be the first year of a new unified engine specification, which would mandate the use of front-mounted 3.4-litre V8s across all GT500 cars. However, due to funding difficulties exacerbated by the global financial crisis, Nissan weren't able to develop a new engine to meet the new requirements, and nor was Honda both using the same engine and layout they had done the previous year, and both having to take on board penalties as a result. Toyota, who were using a 3.4-litre V8, didn't have to endure the same penalties, and therefore, perhaps unsurprisingly, Lexus Team Toms won the championship that year. Despite the penalty, however, Team Aguri and their trusty NSX GT won round 7 at Fuji, and the final race of the season, managing to finish second in the team's championship 
and the Drivers' Championship too. This also meant that the NSX GT won its final ever race in Super GT, marking an impressive end to the car's time in the championship, especially given the circumstances. After 13 years, exactly 100 Super GT slash JGTC races, and five phases of car development, the GT500 Honda NSX GT had won 39 races, two drivers' championships, and three teams' championships. Honda had well and truly held their own against Toyota and Nissan. In the early 90s, Honda's NSX needed a pedigree. By 2009, the pedigree was missing the NSX. But for a decade in between, they had achieved exactly what they set out to do. And the result was some of the best GT cars, both on and off the track, ever built. Check out the story of the Castrol Tom Supra here. Don't forget to check out the posters at automobilistic.com, there's a link below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.